most uh, spine surgeons, especially you know the residents and fellows I've dealt with, they know there's something bad hiding down in the psoas, and they try to stay away from it, but they don't quite uh, uh, fully understand exactly where these bad things are. There's some you know, loose guidelines that you'll find in papers here and there, but uh, you're dealing with a plexus that's uh, ostensibly as complicated, if not more complicated than the brachial plexus, which uh, we spend months learning and teaching uh, to our uh, students. But this is a, a snapshot of uh, the many multiple branches of the lumbar plexus. It's not just a big femoral nerve hiding down there. Uh, there are many more branches. And uh, honestly, most of these branches are getting damaged with approaches to the lumbar spine, uh, whether it be lateral or obliques, et cetera. And that it's the um, lack of clinical examination that uh, means that a lot of these go unnoticed. Uh, so if you look at the basics of the way the, the plexus is put together, this is a, an interesting perspective, um, not a surgical approach, but the anterior vertebral bodies have been removed in the schematic. We are looking at the intradural contents, so you can see the plexus being formed there uh, centrally from, uh, in most people, L1 to L4. Some uh, folks have a strong T12 contribution to the lumbar plexus, which we'll get into in just a minute. But as soon as these fibers come out, they will uh, interdigitate with one another, just like the brachial plexus, cervical plexus, and uh, we start forming these distal terminal branches. So if you look up on the uh, left of the screen, uh, the subcostal nerve, we're going to consider that the first branch. We then have L1 that comes out, and L1 will have two components, iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal. Those kind of run over the surface of the quadratus lumborum. They're just behind the kidney, and all of these being, all of these branches of the plexus being in the retroperitoneal space. As you move on down, you'll run into the lateral femoral cutaneous. Uh, and we'll talk more about that as we go along and look at specifics, but you'll notice that it doesn't follow along the quadratus lumborum. It's uh, more inferiorly, it skirts over the iliacus muscle, and its target uh, is to head out just medial to the anterior superior iliac spine. Just medial to that lateral femoral cutaneous, we see the, the femoral nerve, and uh, the femoral nerve hides inside the uh, psoas major. That's one reason that approaches, especially through tiny little uh, portals uh, make it difficult to see this structure. It's running in a little groove between the iliacus and the lateral margin of the psoas major. If you remove the psoas major and look at the right side of the screen, then you see uh, the femoral ner nerve there from uh, L2, 3, and 4. Just medial to the femoral nerve, we see the obturator nerve, which uh, comes from the same uh, derivation, uh, L2, 3, and 4. And then you start getting into the lumbosacral plexus, so the, the L5 fibers and below, and then a little contribution from L4. If you lay wires on, uh, so we, we operate on bone primarily, that's the imaging modality that you have uh, intraoperatively. So if we uh, lay uh, metal wires along those uh, branch lumbar plexus and do an AP shot, that's what you're dealing with. Um, a little more formidable is if you look at the lateral approach. Now, I increase the girth of the wire, so um, it looks a little uh, busier. But again, uh, between L4 and S1, and you see some of the big players, for example, the femoral nerve, the obturator nerve, lateral femoral cutaneous, are really concentrated there uh, in that uh, L5, S1 region. And then their um, nerve contributions, proximally, uh, some uh, in L4. So if we take uh, each branch, again, we see the, the subcostal nerve. This is uh, from T12, runs out, innervates, as do many of these, some of the anterior lateral abdominal wall muscles. So if you damage them with your approach, you're going to de-innervate uh, anterior lateral abdominal wall muscles and lateral uh, hernias uh, due to uh, de-innervation of these uh, muscles is a side effect that has to be remembered when you're uh, doing lateral approaches to the lumbar spine. That subcostal nerve uh, will continue on, and uh, its distal branch that you see there innervates a little patch of skin just above the pubic bone. So uh, pubic bone anesthesia of the skin over the pubic bone post-lateral uh, approaches, which are just underneath the 12th rib, just above the iliac crest, um, and as I'll show you in a little bit, are most likely always injuring some of that nerve 
uh, can uh, result in decreased sensation at that point and also denervation of the muscles. So this is what the surgeon uh, would not see, but this is the trajectory that he's taking between iliac crest and uh, the uh, 12th rib. This is a, a prone specimen. 12th rib is uh, highlighted in blue. Iliac crest is here with the towel. So the, the trajectory is here, and I've uh, opened up some of the muscles so that you can see the retroperitoneal contents, and then I've color-coded the nerve. So I would like for you to appreciate how prominent that subcostal nerve is, right? It takes up almost that entire space. So when you're making dissection into the lateral uh, anterior, or excuse me, the lateral approach through these uh, lateral abdominal wall muscles, you're most likely injuring some of these branches, uh, less likely with uh, maybe hemostats and scissors versus cautery. This is uh, those same nerves uh, on a different specimen. The iliac crest there is uh, added in blue, and I've also included the 11th, 11th intercostal nerve. So the ribs are removed, but you see how prominent the subcostal nerve is in comparison to anything from L1 or uh, even briefly L2, which most approaches here are not going to injure. As you move down and get away from the subcostal nerve, you see these next two nerves, or maybe you don't see them. This is iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal. Iliohypogastric from 12 and L1 and ilioinguinal specifically from L1. As you go down deeper, you see that these two nerves will course out. Like I said before, they're crossing over the anterior surface of quadratus lumborum. They enter into that muscular plane between the transversus abdominis and the internal abdominal oblique. They innervate those muscles, they move around anteriorly, and then the iliohypogastric uh, muscle will end uh, above uh, the pubic region, uh, innervate the skin there. If you have a pyramidalis muscle, it innervates that. Uh, the iliohypogastric also gives off a, a lateral branch that crosses over the iliac crest. So if you're taking iliac crest for bone harvest, you're uh, likely to uh, e either irritate or injure that branch. Ilioinguinal. Uh, does not have a lateral branch that crosses over the iliac crest and uh, does the same thing as far as innervating the muscles along its course. It then runs out, innervates a little patch of skin on the anterior medial thigh, and then continues on to innervate the anterior aspect of the scrotum and the labia majora. So patients post-op that have any irritation or injury uh, to the ilioinguinal nerve may complain that they have some dysesthesia or anesthesia of uh, anterior scrotum or anterior labia majora. As uh, we see in this picture and then in the lateral aspect, our lateral femoral cutaneous from L2, 3, and 4 uh, usually crosses a finger breadth medial to the ASIS. Sometimes it can even cross a little bit lateral to that, as this picture hints at. But that lateral femoral cutaneous uh, is crossing over the iliacus muscle, as we see here. Uh, it is a uh, cutaneous nerve in that it doesn't uh, supply muscles, but supplies the lateral thigh. Um, if it's compressed or irritated, you get the neuralgia parasthetica that uh, you learned about uh, back in med school. This is a posterior approach, and uh, we've uh, tried to refine this as far as looking at the anatomy so that um, sometimes with the anterior and the lateral approaches, uh, this, uh, these nervous structures are injured. This gives you a, a pristine uh, view of the branches. So this is the left side. You can see the iliac crest has been uh, transected here, 12th rib, and then we see the quadratus lumborum muscle has been cut, and you see the iliohypogastric first, then the ilioinguinal just behind that left kidney. Uh, this would be the plane that the finger's going in for a, a lateral approach where we're pushing forward these uh, retroperitoneal structures, uh, kidney, ureter, for example. We then move down and see the lateral femoral cutaneous from a posterior view crossing uh, over the iliacus behind the psoas major, through the psoas major, it can do both. And then uh, just uh, medial to that, the femoral nerve. And you see that the femoral nerve's really hiding inside the psoas major. It's uh, L2, 3, and 4 components uh, are woven into that muscle, more or less. And you can't uh, get to the entire femoral nerve without really piecemeal removing uh, the psoas major. If the psoas major moves, the femoral nerve moves. That's the take home message. Uh, brief little. Uh, video. This is uh, the right-sided posterior approach to the lumbar plexus. Uh, this is your iliac crest, and then this is midline. So 
So we can see primarily L2, 3, and 4 there coming out medially. Uh, the femoral nerve is seen here. This is the lateral femoral cutaneous. And then we see top subcostal iliohypogastric ilioinguinal. This is uh, the back of the quadratus lumborum. And then this is some of the lateral um, musculature. Now we've uh, done a more medial uh, dissection, isolated the thecal sac. It's an interesting perspective to see the dorsal root ganglia of 2, 3, 4. This is L5. Femoral nerve here. Obturator nerve, sorry, it's a little jumpy. Lateral femoral cutaneous here. Iliohypogastric, ilioinguinal subcostal nerve. The uh, white shiny there on the top, that represents the lower fibers of the diaphragm. So we're looking at the, the parietal, uh, excuse me, the per uh, parietal peritoneum covering the undersurface of the diaphragm. And then finally, a uh, video is not going to work for me, but fecal sac has been uh, filled with fluid so that you can see the dorsal root ganglia and the CSF compartments where they end, and then the intervertebral foramina where these large branches out to the plexus begin. Femoral nerve again. Uh, this is the obturator nerve. This is the L4 component that's running out to join L5 to form your lumbosacral plexus. Genital femoral nerve is a, a branch that uh, comes from L1 and L2. It runs through the psoas major and then divides into a femoral and uh, genital branch. Femoral branch just supplies a little patch of skin above the femoral triangle. The genital branch continues on and uh, clinically, if irritated, causes some dysesthesia or pain in the lower part of the skin of the scrotum, which is uh, where it terminates, or in the lower part of the labia majora. Uh, Anywhere from L1 to L2, uh, through the nerve, through the psoas, all the way out through the inguinal ring. Yeah, it, it can be irritated in a, a lot of spots. So la lateral femoral cutaneous, and this is a genital femoral nerve. Just to show you from an anterior approach, there's a layer that covers these uh, branches, the lumbar plexus, that being this iliac and psoas fascia. Um, so this would be between uh, those nerves and the backside of the peritoneum. You should also, uh, as uh, Dave was asking, so here's genital femoral coming out through the psoas. So any manipulation of the psoas, any manipulation of its contribution from L1 and L2, and then anything that irritates the backside near this inguinal ligament can cause genital femoral neuralgia. So femoral nerve there hiding. So if you see it from this approach, uh, you see just the little uh, crest, the tip of the iceberg as it runs between iliacus and psoas major comes out and then passes underneath the inguinal ligament, lateral, remember, to your femoral artery. And then that branch will give off a, a multitude of anterior femoral cutaneous branches. Uh, it gives off the longest nerve in the body, which is the saphenous nerve that runs all the way down to the medial malleolus onto the dorsum of the foot. Uh, so irritating the femoral nerve or any of these cutaneous branches can have a, a profound distal implication. Uh, you also see in this picture some of the perforations, subcostal, iliohypogastric, as they come out and supply the skin uh, just above the uh, pubic region. We see the genital branch of the genital femoral uh, as it will uh, also run inside the inguinal canal. Ilioinguinal runs out here uh, and also gives, uh, remember, those branches that go out to the perineum. Femoral nerve, uh, just to give you uh, a, a snapshot of its complexity, uh, as it just runs out underneath the inguinal ligament is still this solid uh, contraption, but as soon as you go distal to the inguinal ligament, uh, it explodes into these multiple branches. Some people refer to this as the, the cauda equina of the thigh, so that's a good uh, comparison. You can see all of the different branches uh, to the quadriceps muscles, pectineus, uh, sartorius, et cetera. Uh, and you have to also remember that these nerves, if they're controlling muscles that cross a joint, then they're also going to innervate that joint. So in other words, Hilton's law that you may remember back from orthopedic or medical school training. 
And that being said, that femoral nerve uh, issues can uh, present as knee pain, they can present as hip pain, et cetera. There was a great talk by Keith Mayo here not long ago where he tried uh, to differentiate some of those from uh, just radiculopathies. So the femoral nerve here uh, with uh, the inguinal ligament removed, this is a, a great picture from an old French uh, atlas uh, by Bougerie, and it shows uh, the explosion of those femoral nerve branches just anywhere and everywhere. So you don't want to be in the femoral uh, triangle region. This is the, the obturator nerve has an equal complexity. So if someone took a millimeter by millimeter sections through the obturator nerve, which innervates the muscles of the anterior medial compartment, so your adductor muscles, also innervates the hip and knee joint. So you can also have irritation of the obturator nerve via lateral approaches to the spine. Um, et cetera, that can present as a uh, knee pain and or uh, hip pain. This is a great picture that shows uh, the usually not seen obturator nerve because it's on, remember, the medial side of the psoas major. It's between that muscle and then the iliac vessels uh, just more medially. But you see the obturator nerve here coming through the obturator canal, which is that small little defect in the obturator uh, foramen. And then from there runs out innervates the adductor muscles, uh, gracilis muscle, um, and then uh, has some articular branches. There's a branch that uh, most uh, text and papers totally forget about because it's a variable nerve. It's called the accessory obturator nerve. And the difference between it and the obturator is that it courses over the pectin of the pubis. The obturator nerve goes through the obturator foramen. Uh, it will innervate the pectineus muscle. It can rejoin with the obturator nerve. So uh, folks that uh, operate in this region, uh, especially uh, inguinal hernia surgeons, have to be aware of that. It uh, can be compressed. We've shown in the lab that you can irritate accessory obturator just like you can irritate the other branches of the lumbar plexus with lateral spine approaches. Uh, this just shows a nice cadaver dissection. This is from a few weeks ago in our lab, but we see the right uh, posterior iliac fossa. This is uh, the obturator nerve going deep into the obturator foramen, accessory obturator coming to the surface, and then these are the ili iliac vessels that are pulled uh, more medially. I'll go through these. So the lumbar plexus, remember, can also be uh, combined to form the lumbosacral plexus, and that's from this small little contribution from the L4 nerve. Uh, so this is the L5 nerve. This is the little contribution from the L4 nerve. And then together they form the lumbosacral trunk that crosses over uh, the ilium. And I've uh, scraped away so you can see this uh, grounded area is the sacroiliac joint, which is opened here. This is the obturator nerve that's pulled over. And then the femoral nerve. So we have femoral nerve, more lateral, obturator nerve, more medial, tinted over. L4 contribution to the L5 nerve to form the lumbosacral trunk. And what is the strong ligament that's just below the hemostats there? Professor Dubasse mentioned it in his talk. Iliosacral. Iliolumbar, yeah. So iliolumbar ligament, which is a, a good landmark for identifying these branches of the lumbar plexus that are traversing down to fuse with the branches of the sacral plexus. Let's, uh, one last slide here. So putting that all together, just to give you some uh, perspectives of these uh, branches, again, that are often uh, just hiding and lurking within the psoas major and this musculature. Here we see some of the more superior branches, the subcostal nerve there on top. Uh, we see the L1 through L4 contributions out into the lumbar plexus, forming iliohypogastric, ilioinguinal, lateral femoral cutaneous, genital femoral femoral, obturator nerve more medially, uh, a more surgical perspective. There's the quadratus lumborum removed, and then iliohypogastric, ilioinguinal are facing you. And then uh, a, a fairly formidable uh, array of uh, nerves that are within the surgical plane and have to be uh, at least acknowledged uh, during uh, approaches with the lateral spine. Thank you very much.